Back when I reviewed the Ryzen 5 series, one of the most commonly asked questions was, should I buy the Ryzen 5 1600 or the 1600X? Typically the X model, which sounds much cooler, costs around $20 to $30 US more, but is it as cool as it sounds? My advice to viewers at the time was to opt for the cheaper non-X model, which includes the really nice Wraith Stealth box cooler. Whereas the 1600X doesn't actually come with a cooler at all, despite costing more. The X models are said to be bin chips, and that's how the added price is justified, but I've found that many of the non-X models overclock just as well, uh, and not all X models will hit the expected 4GHz frequency anyway. That said, I've got two 1600 and two 1600X chips on hand right now, and all four run happily at 4GHz using 1.375 volts with DDR4-3200 memory. So if you plan to overclock, the non-X model, in my opinion, is the way to go, and I'd certainly encourage any of you thinking of overclocking or thinking of buying a Ryzen processor to definitely overclock it, especially given how easy it is and you will see greatly improved performance. The situation with the new Ryzen 3 1300X and 1200 is a little different. Here there is a rather large discrepancy in the XR frequencies, and that's the extended frequency range mode for those wondering. Whereas the 1600X clocked up to 5% higher than the 1600, the 1300X can operate at up to 13% higher than the 1200. The difference in the base clocks isn't that extreme, but for gaming the XFR frequency will make more of a difference. That said, the 1300X does cost 18% more than the 1200, so in terms of price versus performance, it's not going to be as good, given at best it will only be a little over 10% faster. The 1300X does however come with the same box cooler as the 1200, so a better option than the 1600X in that regard. So if you're not going to overclock, then the 1300X is a decent value option. However, as I said earlier, Ryzen overclocking is dead easy, and if you're watching this video, you should be resourceful enough to figure it out. We're certainly not talking about extreme overclocking here either. Chances are you'll only need to change a single setting in the BIOS to mimic 1300X-like performance with the 1200. Let me show you what I mean. After loading into the BIOS, you'll want to locate the CPU's clock multiplier or frequency option. It'll vary depending on your motherboard, but it'll be labelled something like that. In the case of the ASRock boards, you want to navigate to the second tab titled OC Tweaker. Then you want to set the CPU frequency and voltage change option from auto to manual. Here you'll see that the CPU frequency value is shown in megahertz and it's set to 3100 by default. Simply change this figure from 3100 to say 3700 and now all the calls will be running at 3.7 gigahertz, effectively making the 1200 now faster than the 1300X. For this overclock, no other settings need to be changed. That's it. Simply save and exit, the system will reboot and load into Windows, with the CPU now running all cores at 3.7 GHz. A quick check with Cinebench R15 and we see that the 1200 is now indeed faster than a stock 1300X, as it can now produce a multi-threaded score of 572 points. That's almost a 30% increase over stock and an 11% increase over the stock 1300X. Pretty good for around 30 seconds worth of tinkering, I reckon. Also, keep in mind this can all be achieved without spending any additional money on a special motherboard, for example. A basic B350 board will do, and the AMD Race Stealth box cooler can easily support this overclock. Additionally, you could also achieve this overclock using AMD's Ryzen Master software within Windows, and it works very well, but I find the BIOS method quick and easy. So as you can see, there really is no need to spend that extra $20 US on the 1300X if you're willing to be a teeny tiny bit tech savvy. Anyway, it's not a seriously big deal either way, but saving a bit here and there on a budget build really can help. I'd rather spend that money, for example, somewhere where it can make a noticeable difference, like getting a faster GPU or maybe a bigger SSD, something along those lines. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. If you like this video, then please be sure to hit the like button and give us your thoughts on the new Ryzen 3 CPUs. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time, guys.